Hey, welcome to Come On You Spurs TV. Today we are doing something different. We are looking at the uh, key match of the weekend. Uh, the key match for us we're going to look at this weekend is the match between Manchester City and Chelsea that took place at the Etihad Stadium. To join me on the other side to review this is Chuma. Uh, Chuma is my co-host on Come On You Spurs TV and Chuma is a walking encyclopedia of Tottenham, <laughs> of Spurs, <laughs> of Spurs. <laughs> oh, sorry, walking encyclopedia of football in general so yes uh, so Chuma welcome here how are you uh, just bear with me one second while I bring up Chuma how are you it's good to have you um, I know I'm super good I'm super good it's nice to uh, you know we've, we've talked about reviewing other games so it's really good to talk tactically about another game with less passion or less I would say less passion I'd say less anxiety you know, I know right uh, you know how it's always good to be a neutral <laughs> in this in this other, in this other game, right? I mean, but uh, with yeah. neutral looking at it from the point of view, I say you want maybe Man City to drop a few points. Okay, pass the Spurs fine. You don't particularly like Chelsea. You want them to not do so well, <laughs> but okay, you have you like Pochettino, so because of his history with Tottenham, you want him to do Pep. You know, all those mixed feelings from a neutral perspective. I mean, from a Spurs neutral perspective, if you like, <laughs> because City doing well, okay will obviously advance them and I mean maybe get them to overtake Liverpool and obviously do our own chances of you know I mean catching them even even though some people believe we don't have a chance of catching them but hey that's another story entirely but uh, hey this is Optimus we live in a world of optimism so Chelsea, uh, City Chelsea now Pep and um, uh, Pochettino have a history uh, history from the Spurs days. I know that if I look at, if you look back at the time Chelsea, I mean, sorry, Pep came into um, City, and uh, I think at that time, um, perhaps Pochettino came in just before him. You know, he'd been a little bit established just ahead of, um, of um, you know, but it seemed to always have Pep's number. You know, and just see, I think that it was the Poch era that we started to have City's number. You know, because we just seemed to always have. And it over them, they probably we probably won more matches against them than they did against us, you know. And that sort of continued with subsequent managers. So yes, I mean it's um it's and you think that okay that would play out in, in this sort of match. So I mean let's just run through the highlights of this match. I mean uh, score ended up one one, you know Chelsea scoring first and City dominating possession. But I mean Chelsea had a lot of press. They had they pressed them, you know, like a classic. To see the type press. I mean, you 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 saw that. I mean, you take us through what, what you saw in that match because it was like it was a real joy for the uh, what you might call the tactical um, perspective. It was like tactical, tactical chess neutral. between the both of them. For the, for, the, for the neutral tactical guys watching, I think it was I think it was a lot of fun. Um, so I'll go backwards to come forward. So going backwards, I'll go. Um, Pochettino is a is an Espanol man. He's a, he was captain of Espanol the same way Pep Guardiola was uh, captain of um, Barcelona. And the two teams both are in Barcelona and they've been rivals forever. And so it sets the tone of how the two men are. And in terms of their ideology as well, I think they have lots of similarities and differences as well in how they play. Um, when they first met in as coaches, I think uh, this was around the time Pep had taken over Barcelona. Um, Pochettino started off coaching Espanol, saved them from relegation, and he played this game against uh, Barcelona where everyone expected Barcelona to win. Barcelona were in their pump. And the masterclass of pressing and 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 probing football that uh, Pochettino managed to get his Espanol side to play. Even Pep Guardiola came out. There was a quote, and I'm probably going to butcher it, uh, paraphrasing. He said, Pochettino teams come for you. They don't let you wait. They just come for you. And that is something that I think has characterized the way Pochettino plays football. Pochettino's team are very proactive, much like his mentor, um, the fame, the famous or infamous, based on how you see him, Marcelo Bielsa. And in this particular game, no different. Um, well, I'll correct you in one thing, Soji. You said we started to get their number from... Um, 
from Pochettino. I uh, beg to differ. I say Harry Redknapp. Remember the famous uh, game where uh, we oh, sealed yeah. Champions League qualification for the first time. So you know, just to, just so just so Jamie Redknapp. I wasn't trying to rewrite history. Like, sorry, I was just trying. Sorry, <laughs> I was mean, just to, in recent history, if you like. Yeah, more recent history. Okay, carry on. <laughs> more recent history. Okay, okay, more recent history. But yeah, you know, they started this game. Um, they started this game off. Um, Pochett- uh, Pep Guardiola started this game and. We, we we know what happens at this stage of the season. The way the script was written is Pep Guardiola starts his winning run and he started that very well. He's been winning every single game. They are back in the run. Uh, they have games in hand and everyone goes, right, Chelsea are just lambs to the slaughter where a lot of people, a lot of pundits were predicting that, you know, Pep would come in and it would be like a 2-3-0, 4-0 demolition, decoration job. But Slowly and slowly and slowly, people are noticing that Pochettino is really trying to really instill his uh, pressing his pressing philosophy on his team. The problem has been that I think he's had a side that hasn't really reflected him, mainly because, as we know, a lot of the players were bought by the ownership, not by Pochettino. And he's been asked to solve the jigsaw puzzle, put in square pegs into round holes and vice versa. And it's not really worked out for him. And it's, you know, you can see it in the, in the way the team is. I look at their anchor in um, Enzo, Fernandez and Caicedo, and they're not exactly, you know, you remember, if you remember the, the Tottenham, Wanyama and Dembele, these guys are bruised brothers. They stay there. Their job is really to stifle and just move that ball. But you look at Caicedo and Enzo, and you can't really see that. but And everyone goes, okay, now they'll dominate possession. But it was the other way around. Pochettino had planned it out so well that he had Gallagher, Enzo, and Caicedo as three, outnumbering the two in midfield that um, that Pep had. And then he had Cole Palmer and Sterling stay wide and then also help their fullbacks. So at no given time did Pep really have numerical superiority on any side of the pitch. And then as soon as his defenders or goalkeeper got the ball, the Chelsea players just converged. You just you just remember good old-fashioned poch press where you had Son, you'd have Dele, you'd have Lamella. Kane leading the line. And it, <laughs> oh, and Lamella, the pressing thing himself. And right. this was exactly the same. And because of this, it's it stopped the ball going into... Um, Kevin De Bruyne. The, the real thing you didn't want was Kevin De Bruyne on the ball. Absolutely. And for Enzo shadowed him so well. And if it wasn't Enzo, it was Gallagher. And then Pep, of course, being who he is, is always trying to, he's always trying to, like, uh, like you said, it's a chess game for him. He was playing Alvarez in central midfield, which we've never really seen. Alvarez is more wide or playing as a false nine. And it didn't work. He was just getting bossed and his runs were getting checked by Cole Palmer um, and uh, Malo Gusto as well. So Chelsea really did well. And then Chelsea just broke away, got the ball, broke away, and it was a straight pass into um, Sterling. Sterling. And Sterling cut and shot. Brilliant goal. And then all Chelsea did was contain and looking for that perfect opportunity to break, but I, they couldn't I, just I, get I that second for a minute goal. that uh, you would have the classic story of uh, Sterling going back to, te- to City and scoring the winner, you know, and um, you, you know the classic uh, story of the ex ex city boy coming to, uh, you know, uh, send them some, you know, tears, <laughs> send, them, send them home in tears, but it wasn't to be. Now, I mean, of course, Pep and, and I mean, take us take us through Pep. I mean, their, their, their goal, you know. Yeah. Now, to 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 his credit, Sterling didn't celebrate as much. He, he yeah. wanted to. He had a mini-ish sort of celebration. But know, then he realized he was loved. He was, he, was, he was loved in City. So he didn't really celebrate that much. But like I said, tactical masterclass. But then, you know, the beauty of Pep Guardiola is this. His teams are relentless. They kept pressing. They had m- m- all the possession virtually. and But he just couldn't get inside that third. They just couldn't get the ball to, in the first half anyway, they couldn't get the ball to Ellen Haaland and it just wasn't clicking. But by the second half, Pep had realized what his mistakes were or at least he'd found a way to get an advantage and that was to take Alvarez off and bring Bernardo on. And by bringing Bernardo on, he now had another creative player in midfield and that allowed 
um, Manuel Akonji dropped back into the fence, but he now pushed Kyle Walker forward as someone who could cross. And as soon as he did this, boom, the game just, the game just, it was just, it was just a question of when. Yeah, for whatever reason, Erling Haaland isn't quite the same player he was last season. And that's not to say that Haaland is overnight a bad player. It's just that, you know, what did, what, what, what did they say? The lines are not falling clearly for him this season. He had certain chances created by um, Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne himself was trying to do that thing where he goes out wide and puts in those wonderful death crosses. Chelsea were really, really smart and they locked off that avenue. But Erling Haaland did have two or three chances, one or two half chances that on a normal basis, at least you get it on target and let's see what happens with the rebound. But it just wasn't happening. And, you know, all you can say about this game was it was a tactical masterclass from Pochettino in terms of containing Chelsea and hitting them on that break as well. Unfortunately for him, you can't hold out that long. And Pep Guardiola himself is the tactical man in the world. He's probably the best tactical coach in the world, in my opinion, anyway, at the moment. So it just ended up being advantage Liverpool. And you could almost say advantage Arsenal uh, because everyone thought that Ch um, City and uh, Liverpool would be so far out the gates that Arsenal wouldn't see them. But to their credit, and you know, we don't like to credit the people down the road that much, but to their credit, they are banging form and scoring goals and doing what they need to do to stay in the challenge. So right now, I think City have a game in hand. We'll see what happens next. Yeah, I guess it's one of these things where, look, at the end of the day, it's, it's a point on the board that matters, isn't it? So, But City have a way of um, pulling, the cat out of, pulling the rabbit out of the heart when they need to. So yes, I mean... Um, it's still even Stevens. Uh, I mean, on paper, probably have three teams looking uh, very, very well locked in into the title race. Uh, that's Liverpool, uh, City, and Arsenal. And I mean, you have the fringe players like uh, us and um, uh, Villa. But hey, remotes and then the very, very long shot. City, I mean, mind you, but hey, very, very long shot. Like I said, so I mean, it's still what 13 more matches to go for, for the end of the season. There's a lot to look out for, and um, yeah, we'll uh, just we'll love to hear from you what you think of of, um, of uh, City's performance and Chelsea's performance. Is this a revival for Pochettino, uh, or just one you know um, highlight? I mean, headline performance against um, a, a top team because they did, did that against us. Um, they, they won against us at home, sorry, away, and um, get a good performance. Yeah. City. So is it a beginning of a revival or just one of these up and downs that we've had this season? Uh, we'd love to hear from you and, and hear your thoughts on, on that as well. Uh, this is Common You Spurs TV. It's been great to have you guys. Great to have you talk to uh, Chuma. Always a pleasure having you here. And uh, thank you so much, guys. Um, if this is your first time on this session, subscribe, uh, leave a like, and also obviously share with your colleagues and friends. And hit, hit the bell button. To get notified anytime we go live um we'll look forward to seeing you next week when we talk about the highlights oh well yeah the the um the key match of the weekend um i can't tell you what that is at this point but uh, yeah we'll, um, we'll, we'll hit that next week yeah and then uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you uh, thank you so much guys um take good care god bless god bless in the meantime come on you spurs <laughs> <laughs>